Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be replacing the gaskets on both the oil cooler as well as the oil filter housing on this 2013 BMW X5. This has the N55 motor, which was found on 3 Series, 5 Series, X6, X5, X3, lots of BMWs. So while this is applicable to a lot of different configurations, the steps might differ and vary a little bit. So grab a cold beverage, and let's get wrenching. Let's talk strategy. As always, first things first, we're going to be removing a bunch of plastics. So engine cover, air filter box, the hose that goes to the air filter box, as well as clean up a little bit because there has been quite a bit of oil leaking for however long this gasket has failed and it flung oil everywhere. This is quite the mess. So we're going to be cleaning up as we remove these plastics. Next up, the car agrees. Next up, we're going to be removing this support bar. This is kind of like a structural support bar in the front here. And then we're going to get to the main course, which is disconnecting and carefully draining the coolant that is present in these cooling lines that are connected to both the cooling housing as well as the oil filter housing. Then we're going to move on to uh, disconnecting some of the wiring in the back of the engine and then undo all the nuts that are holding the intake manifold onto the cylinder head. Now we have to do this because there is a very tricky bolt that holds the filter housing onto the cylinder head. In previous configurations of the engine, you were able to get away with like various Torx bits and extensions, etc. However, that is no longer possible. The angle of the intake manifold is so much tighter that at this point, to my knowledge, there is no more the possibility to cheat and get away with it. I had a previous video on the N52 where I was able to get that bolt out without disconnecting the intake manifold. However, on the N54 and N55, to my knowledge, this is not possible because I've seen people just claim that it's possible, but I've never actually seen anybody do it. That being said, once we have the intake manifold to a point where we can very carefully pull it up, we're going to be able to uh, pull out that last, uh, I think it's an E10 Torx. And at that point, we should be able to uh, clean everything up, replace our gasket and go in reverse order and be done with the job. So uh, yeah, theory is always fun and easy. Let's see how this turns out in the end. We have our plastic here for the engine cover at the front, very gently pull up on the cover and then you're going to be pulling towards you towards the front of the vehicle this comes right out next up we have this intake snorkel or intake hose there are three clips one in the front two hidden underneath so what you need to do is very carefully push them inward and you should be able to release these three this is like unnecessarily difficult but yeah just be very careful like i said make sure you push them towards the snorkel on all three of them and then this should come right out now before we can disconnect and pull out the air box uh, there are actually a couple very important power wires that we need to undo and these are held on by various grommets there should be three of them these are a little bit tricky to get off got the first one right here and there's two more to go and number three so yeah like i said these are very important uh just kind of push them to the side now we should be able to address our air box. There is a hose clamp that you need to loosen right here. Use that same flathead screwdriver that you were using to loosen your snorkel. And then we should be able to gently pull up our air box. I believe there are three grommets holding it in place. And just like that, the air box is out. This reinforcement bar brace, it has four 13 millimeter bolts. Before you pull this bar out, make sure that you disconnect this very skinny line. Like I said, I believe this is the hood release line. Shuffle it around a little bit. And there you go, there's your bar. 
Now, as I've mentioned before, in my case, there's quite a bit of oil that has spilled everywhere. So this is definitely somewhat of an optional step depending on how clean your engine bay is. But I would definitely recommend to clean as much as you can. These are spots that on a regular basis you're not going to be accessing. So if you can take your time, inspect your car for additional leaks, don't yank on things to, to get them out of the way because that's how you break clips, that's how you break brittle plastics. And yeah, just take your time, kind of get to know your car because obviously you are the one that is maintaining it. So the more familiar you are with what the current shape is, the better you're going to be in terms of uh, identifying future leaks, future issues, etc., or how things should be going back together. And next, we are going to be draining the coolant out of the two housings as already mentioned. What you're going to do is cut a small container to size or use whatever you have available. What I did here is obviously used a one quart container and I cut it down. That way I can easily slip down underneath this particular hose, flathead screwdriver. So just under your hose right here. So there you go. So I'm able to save some of it. And once you've once you've gotten about two containers, like two small containers out, um, there's no need to drain the whole thing because I do believe it's going to start draining your entire coolant reservoir. I'm just going to keep this over here nice and secured. Uh, you could potentially even just zip tie it out of the way. Now we are going to address the second coolant line right here. This is the big one. Uh, you can access this once again with your flathead screwdriver. There's going to be a little hoop that you simply gently pull on. It'll be very obvious once you see the end of the hose connection and you pull that little uh, ring towards the front of the vehicle. At this point, your coolant hose should come loose and very gently move this hose out of the way. The reason why I did it this way with the smaller one first and the, the larger one second, because you can imagine the large one, if it's full of coolant, that is gonna be an uncontrollable spill versus a small one. You can at least somewhat try to have that container underneath catching some of the coolant. Again, you're not gonna catch all of it, but imagine if you had this uh, just gushing, you know, coolant out and coolant coming out of the housing and all that stuff, it'd be an absolute mess, so. The next area we're going to be working on is this uh, oil cooling housing. This is held on by one, two, and then three down below E12 Torx bits. Loosen these guys gently. Make sure you can reach all of them before you completely undo them. So there you go. That's two. There you go. Get some more additional rags down here and then remove the last bit of this cooling housing. There you go. Yep. Quite a bit of oil spilling out, as you can see, as to be expected. That's why we have our rags and everything there. We are going to undo seven nuts. And then right here, these are bolts. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. This one's like hidden way back behind all this wiring. This one you're gonna have to do blind with uh, an extension and an 11 millimeter socket. You're gonna be undoing this intake manifold. You're gonna move it just enough to get the extension and socket onto this bolt. All right, success guys. Pretty proud of this. Uh, I was very concerned about it because <laughs> if you couldn't tell that that back one is a, is a real pain in the butt. So essentially what you have to do is just blindly guide it on, reach in from the very top of the engine bay, um, back down, and then with your right hand, you're gonna be undoing this nut. And um, essentially you have to listen for it to start skipping threads. At this point, you know to disconnect your ratchet, and then you're going to very gently push this nut into the socket and you know fedangle the whole thing out don't, don't drop it. Don't drop it down. That would, that would suck. It's probably going to get stuck somewhere in your transmission or the actual transmission would be worst case scenario. At this point, we're just going to undo the remaining six nuts and then the two bolts right here. And then at that point we should be able to, uh, you know, lift up the intake manifold and go along our way to unbolt the oil filter housing. So you always want to go from the outside and go to the inside. So start at the back the front, and then work your way in 
uh, with all these bolts and nuts. Um, it's just the way the, the pressure is distributed. So make sure that's something you follow. It's the same thing on like oil pans and exhaust manifolds. Like that's just a that's just a path you wanna you wanna take. And then also another thing that's really important is make sure that um, you know you you don't manhandle or or try to be rough with any of these vacuum lines. Um, you know very gently work your way in and undo these uh, bolts and nuts and you should be good. We just got done removing all of the nuts and bolts from the intake manifold. There's two more steps. Make sure that you undo this little clip right here. That'll give you a lot of movement on the back end of the manifold. And then second, right here, down there, you can see that little hole. There is a plastic clip that holds this wiring harness onto the intake manifold, which kind of prevents you from reaching in and being able to get to that pain in the butt bolt, whatever you want to call it. Okay, okay, pull off. Oh, you can see there's quite a bit of movement at that point in the manifold. So that should give us just enough room in order to use our, I think it's an E10 Torx with a wobbly, with an extension, and then you, I have a quarter inch ratchet that I'm using to reach into our spot right here and undo that bolt all right that is looking really good and now we should be able to undo uh this top one and there's one coming from the bottom before you do that definitely make sure you undo your oil filter there will be some oil draining back into the cylinder head and all the way to your oil pan the bolt that i'm trying to get to is down here i don't know if you can see that try to undo that I'm so sorry. Uh, I know this looks terrible on camera, but you get the gist. All right, wow. So this is gonna be a long bolt at this very angle uh, going into your oil filter housing. This right here is gonna be our last bolt. This is another E10 that you need to get out. It's a long one. We're going to be removing oil filter housing. All right, this is pretty exciting. So we have the oil filter housing as well as the oil cooler housing removed at this point. You can see there's some oil uh, left over, some coolant dripping everywhere. Make sure you clean this as much as you have patience for. And guys, once we have this cleaned, we are ready for the reinstall. So let's get going. At this point, I have also cleaned my oil filter housing in my parts washer. I have already gone ahead and picked out the old gasket and pushed in my new gasket. And at this point, we are ready to install the oil filter housing back onto the cylinder head. I have my three Torx bolts right here, ready to go. So what we're gonna do, first things first, is utilize the back Torx bolt and kind of guide it in already because remember we have a very tight clearance to work with. So what I'm gonna do is with Torx bolt in very gently place this in its spot. Try to get that back bolt started. Next up we have our long Torx bolt that's gonna go through the top here and then we have our bottom shorter bolt also get started right down here. Evenly tighten all of these bolts. So I want all of them to go on somewhat with even pressure. So that's going to require you a couple turns on this bolt, on that bolt, on the back bolt, and then just keep going around. So I'm just gonna get this barely snug touching. And do the same thing all around until you have even pressure um, according to your torque specs. And then we are just about ready to start tightening down the intake manifold. All right, that is it for the intake manifold. It's all torqued down. At this point, we are pretty much done with this process at the back of the engine or, or center and back of the engine. We can now move to the oil cooler housing. Guys, if this video is at all helpful, if you're finding some useful information, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of this process? What do you think of this video? I always appreciate your feedback. 
And at this point, we are going to start bolting on the oil cooler housing at the very front of this assembly. We're almost done. This is pretty exciting. Make sure all the little tabs are in place. We can put our cleaned housing onto the new gasket. We have three new Torx bolts. So one in the top left, middle right, and then one in the bottom there. Next up, we got our oil pressure sensor back here, which we're going to reconnect. There you go. Remember, this is going to connect at the bottom of the oil cooler housing. Uh, make sure you slide that on. So to tighten that lower hose, I actually used a six millimeter socket. Um, that hose clamp in my case was a six millimeter, could be different in your case, depending on who's worked on it last. So I'm just gonna say either use a screwdriver or a socket depending on your application. Here comes our reinforcement brace. Remember to kind of uh, wiggle that back in. We have our four 16 millimeter bolts that we're going to hand tighten. Okay, there you go. That is the last two bolts torque to spec. And at this point, we can reattach our hood release cable. There you go, you got your three clips right there. Then we have our air box. Go ahead and slide it into your air intake hose back here. Make sure that this gasket right here is not uh, collapsed or misaligned. There we go. I can feel them pop. So this is, yep, this is nice and tight at this point, nice and secured. There are those three grommets, remember? So you have your little pins and grommets. Make sure this air filter box is nice and secured. There you go. There is one more very important detail, which is your engine beauty cover. Remember, there are two guide pins at the back. They go into this intake hose or, or pipe back there. So go ahead and align those. And then we have two grommets up front. One, two, there we go. Guys, this is how you do the oil filter housing and oil cooler housing gasket on an N55 BMW motor. This engine is so common, you need to know how to do this. Consider subscribing to the channel. I have lots of you know DIY stuff coming up on N55, X5, BMW models. And leave me a comment. Let me know, was this helpful? Was this straightforward? Was it, do you have questions? Are there things that you didn't like? Things that I can improve upon. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.